people is inserted. Go for lunch. Gas closeouts complete. Stage one tanks press over the floor. Nice, 15 seconds. Five, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Division is back. And there you saw we had a successful liftoff of the Falcon 9. Uh, if you were watching closely, you also saw the strong back retract just during uh, that initial part. Uh, we're currently throttling down the main engines in order to minimize some of the pressure as we move through supersonic. And coming up next, uh, max Q, which is the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure where the rocket's pushing hardest against the, the atmosphere. Vehicle is supersonic. And then we just had a call out the vehicle supersonic. Max Q coming up shortly. That's when the rocket's moving very quickly and hasn't quite gotten out of the atmosphere yet, so it's getting a lot of pressure. The vehicle has reached maximum dynamic pressure. And then it's made it through that milestone, which is a, a major part of every rocket launch. Coming up about 45 seconds from now, we'll have a few events in quick succession. Uh, the main engines will cut off, the two stages will separate, and the second stage will ignite. MVAC engine chill. Uh, the call out for MVAC engine chill uh, means that just like the first stage engines, uh, the second stage engine is also being cooled down uh, to be ready for uh, moving all that super cold propellant through it. Uh, that main engine cutoff event coming up not too long from now. Stage separation confirmed. And there you saw it. Uh, the main engines cut off. Good recognition. The two stages separated. And MVAC Stage one AFTS is safe. burning really bright uh, has begun. Uh, the second stage is now carrying Dragon towards low Earth orbit. Uh, again, we are not uh, following the first stage. Vehicle is on a nominal trajectory. Uh, we're not recovering this one. In fact, it's the last Block 4 vehicle as we transition to Block 5. We're now at T plus four minutes. 
Uh, the Merlin vacuum engine is looking great. And we are on a nominal trajectory towards that initial low Earth orbit. Uh, the second stage is going to drop Dragon off in that low Earth orbit, and Dragon will be raising itself over the next three days to uh, connect and, uh, to rendezvous with the International Space Station. Uh, it'll be there for about a month, uh, and then it will also be bringing back the uh, that latching end effector, which is the, the hand of Canadarm. Uh, it'll be bringing back the old one when it returns. Position at New Hampshire. You'll also notice that the, the, there's a lot more detail that you can see on the uh, Merlin vacuum engine. It's actually flying into daylight right now, which is why some of that, uh, some of that detail is more visible. T plus five and a half minutes. Uh, Merlin vacuum engine still performing nominally, headed on the right trajectory to get to low Earth orbit. Has about three minutes remaining in this burn. It's an interesting semantic point uh, that the process of connecting Dragon to the International Space Station is called birthing uh, with an E. Uh, because it is brought into the station by Canadarm, uh, while docking refers specifically to two spacecraft that connect without any external assistance. Uh, this stems from the old shipping days in which small ships would come into harbor and dock themselves under their own power, uh, but larger ships, which aren't able to navigate as easily in harbors, are met by tugboats and then berthed. Uh, so, for the International Space Station, that robotic Canadarm is like a tugboat, and so Dragon is also birthed. Vehicle remains on a nominal trajectory. We're just coming up on T plus seven minutes. Uh, the vehicle's still on the a nominal trajectory towards low Earth orbit. And Merlin vacuum engine still performing great. We've got about a minute and 10 seconds left in this uh, second stage burn. T plus eight minutes. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Uh, the second stage is uh, stage starting to throttle the MVAC D engine in order to prepare for shutdown. That shutdown event coming up uh, only a few seconds from now. And there you can see the second stage engine has shut down. Nominal orbit insertion. And we've also just gotten confirmation that the orbit uh, that the second stage and Dragon are in is a nominal orbit. 
Uh, so at the moment, uh, both Dragon and the second stage are coasting. Uh, and Dragon is shortly going to deploy from the second stage. Uh, that's when the second stage is going to release Dragon uh, so that it can carry itself to the International Space Station over the next couple of days. Uh, few, three days, to be specific. This is CC on countdown, very front and There you see it. Uh, Dragon has successfully deployed. Um, we've got a number of important uh, steps still coming up. Uh, the solar array is going to deploy next. Uh, the solar arrays uh, power Dragon during its uh, rendezvous process uh, with uh, the International Space Station. Um, that process itself consists of several engine burns. Uh, those are height adjustment and co-elliptic burns. And those adjust the orbits to get it closer to the International Space Station and then uh, to finally get uh, reached out to by the Canadarm. Uh, so during the last about 30 kilometers or so, uh, where Dragon and ISS are uh, close enough, uh, they'll establish a direct communications link, and then Dragon will slowly approach, pause at several checkpoints along the way to ensure everything is still going as expected, and eventually, in the early hours of Monday morning, uh, Pacific time, Dragon will be close enough for the Canadarm to grab it. Those solar arrays will be deploying uh, just under a minute from now. We're hoping to be able to. This is a Dragon CC on countdown. The Dragon's Dragon's video system attack. has successfully primed, and all thrusters report ready for firing. coming up just a couple seconds from now. Dragon is deploying the solar arrays. And there you can see uh, those solar arrays are slowly unfolding in order to be generating power for Dragon over the next three days. Uh, it's actually the back side of the solar arrays that you can see at the moment. It's the front sides, uh, of course, which will actually be generating that power. And another view of those solar arrays. Looking great, just coasting there above the Earth in the background. Lots of signal in New Hampshire.